Here we go. We are looking at the reconciliation of the Lord. We've been looking at the person of the gospel for some time and how God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. So we have looked at that for the last few weeks. And I'll just mention that scripture, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. But we're going to move back into 1 John. In the book of 1 John, we looked at this last time I shared, or a couple weeks ago or so. And in 1 John uh, chapter 5, verse 18, it says, We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one touches him not. And we know that we are of God and the whole world life and wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God in eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. So, in this, the whole world lies in wickedness. You could say the whole world is in Adam's transgression. In Romans, it says, by one man, sin came into the world. And we're going to read this in a moment, but the whole world, the arrangement of the wor world, the adornment of the world is wickedness. In Hebrews 3, Hebrews 3, verse 7, the Bible reads here, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in, the, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Take ye, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. That this is the same word as wickedness, an evil heart of unbelief, an evil heart, wicked heart, in departing from the living God. So what was wickedness was not believing. What was wicked was they did not believe God. That was a evil or wicked heart of unbelief. And because of that, they couldn't enter into the rest of God. And so we know the whole world lieth in wickedness. And you could even look at this in, in Adam, view it this way. Adam didn't believe God. God said to Adam, in the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. He heard another voice, or he actually heard the voice of his wife. His wife heard another voice. And she partook of the other voice that she gave to her husband, and he did eat. So he ate of another voice and the voice of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So, so wickedness is not just bad actions, but the writer here declares wickedness as not believing the word of the Lord. That's an evil heart of unbelief. So an evil heart, and how do we depart from the living God? According to the book of Hebrews, is having an evil heart of unbelief, not believing 
what God has said. That's how we depart from the living God. So we're not believing what God has said. It's very important to get a hold of here. In the book of, well, I'll read on here in Hebrews and then we'll go. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily what is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned? whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. And I already spoke about Adam. He didn't believe God. He didn't, he didn't believe the word of God. In the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. And going back to that, Genesis 3, Genesis 3, verse 4. The serpent said to the woman, now this is surface. Just reading all, just going to speak to this right off the surface for a moment. The serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, or as God. Or you shall be God. Knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat. And gave also to her husband, and to her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves ap aprons. So the devil said, You shall not be, you shall not die, and you shall be as God. Okay. They knew they were unclothed when they ate. They knew they had no clothing. Now, I know that was external clothing, but internally they were naked before God. They had no garment. So, so we see that Adam, Adam, because you heeded to the voice of your wife. See, he heeded not to the voice of God. He, he heard another voice. See, she heard a voice. She, she had the voice of her husband, at least I'm going to assume she did, that told her not to eat of this tree. Well, Adam had been instructed by God, commanded of God not to eat of this tree. And he heard another voice than the voice of God. And he ate of the tree. And, God's, and God said unto Adam, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree, which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So the ground was cursed because of Adam's disbelief, because of Adam's disobedience. And it brought up thorns and thistles. See, if Adam had believed God, I can't get off of this. If Adam had received and believed what God had said, he wouldn't have ate from another voice. 
he wouldn't have gave place to that voice, but he gave place to that voice. And we know in the book of Romans, Paul speaking back to this in Romans 5, verse 12 says, Romans 5, 12, says, wherefore, because of one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and death passed upon all men, for all sin. For unto the law was in the world, for unto the law sin was in the world, but sin's not imputed when there's no law. So what law did was to expose sin. Okay, we, we know this. And it says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is a figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, have abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto life. Many offenses unto justification, for if by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So we have here death coming into the world through a man. Notice what it comes in, through a man. Why did it come through a man? Because man had dominion in the earth. And all through time, right? All through the times, God dealt with man through men. Get a hold of that. God dealt with mankind through Noah. God dealt with mankind through Moses, through Joshua, through Caleb. Why? Because Man had dominion in the earth. So ultimately, God was going to come into man. That was the only answer for man. There was no other place for man to come out of the state of being he was in. Anyway, as we look at this, in John 3, it says, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Why is he condemned? Because he didn't do the works of the law? No. 
because he did not believe in the only begotten Son of God. God gave his Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, this, this goes along with what we were looking at in Hebrews 3. In Hebrews 3, of entering in by faith, by believing. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is condemnation, that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. Now, there's so much to break down here. Men love darkness rather than light. <laughs> so light came. When did light come into the world? When Jesus came, he said, I am the light. What is light? It's the understanding of God. It's what light is. God's thought, purpose, understanding toward man. Toward man. So it's the understanding of God toward man. What understanding did Jesus bring? What obvious understanding did he bring toward man, toward purpose? God was in Christ. Okay. God was in Christ. Hear that. What was unique about Jesus? God was in Christ. That was what was unique. So light came into the world. Was light not already? Was light not already? Sure, it was already. All the light, all the understanding, all the knowledge was already. But it wasn't in the world. It wasn't manifest to man. God's purpose wasn't made known. It never was made known to Adam. Now, I want you to hear this. Had Adam known the purpose of God and just fell from the purpose of God, He may have been able to declare where he fell from. Just a thought. But I'm going to suggest to you he didn't know the purpose. I'm going to suggest he fell from purpose, that he hadn't attained it. I'm going to suggest that he fell from what? God had created him for. He fell short, Paul says, of the glory of God, meaning he hadn't attained God's glory. He fell short. So God's purpose came, the light of God's purpose came when Jesus came in the earth. What was unique of Jesus that was unlike every other man that was upon the earth, Jesus said God was in him. Now, that was a unique kind of man. That man looked like every other man. He didn't have a halo according to the Bible. He wasn't walking around with a halo around his head. There was no former comeliness 
according to the Bible, no, no certain thing about Jesus. You know, you know, he was just a man. But what was unique about it was God was in him. And he manifested that. Well, that was the thought and the mind of God toward man from the beginning. And here we go to the beginning. Genesis 1. Genesis 1. So getting to the beginning. The Bible says in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, what did God say? Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, I want you to notice something. The word came out of God. Here was the emphasis that was up on my heart earlier this week. God said. God said. What happens when somebody says something? A word comes. This word that God said is, let there be light. Now, you could say, well, he made the sun, the moon, and the stars. But in this day, according to Genesis 1, it doesn't give the definition of the sun, moon, and stars. But I believe if you read through here, I believe it's day four. I believe it's day four anyway. It could be day five. It could be day three. He makes the sun, moon, and stars. So light come. God said, let there be light. So God's intention was light and understanding in man from the beginning. So what God was ultimately creating here was a man, right? And what God said in the beginning of the creation was let there be light. So God's determined purpose in man was light. Okay, and, Je and John 3, where we just read, light came and men loved darkness rather than the light. What did they love? Themselves. That's the darkness. Paul says, you were darkness. So the darkness of their own mind, the darkness of their own heart. But from the beginning, God was after light. Let there be light. Now, John 1. In the beginning was the word. That word, word, logos, in the basic definition of it is something said. All right? In the depth of the definition... It gets into the divine, divine thought, the divine purpose. But, it, but in the basic definition of logos is something said. Well, here in the beginning, God said, let there be light. So, so the determined purpose of God in creation was light. Okay. So everything being created after this was for the light. Not the sunlight, but the light that Jesus comes and declares himself to be. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I am the light. 
Now, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So, so in the beginning, the same divine counsel, purpose, plan was in the beginning. God never changed his plan and his purpose. That was in the beginning. A lot of Christians think he had to change it, but he never did. It was the same purpose in the beginning that we're coming to now in Christ. God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, before the world was in the determined counsel of God, in the heart of God, God chose in Christ. So when he set this emotion, he said, let there be light. Well, this light was who and what God is. And this man, Adam, didn't know who and what God is. Now, when I'm talking about this man, Adam, I'm talking about the Adamic man. The Adamic man as a whole, mankind as a whole, didn't know who, what, or how God is. So he imagined him. Now that's darkness. Jesus came to define him. Jesus came that he would be made known. The word was made flesh in order that light would be made known to us who received him. That we would have the light of life. Get that. Light of life. If you do not have life, you can't have light. Because the light is of life. So the illumination of God comes through the life. So the life has to come into the heart to illuminate the soul or else the soul is dark, full of vain imaginations. All is vanity and vexation of the spirit, Solomon writes. All these things have happened under the sun. All the things common to man have always been common to man. Light had to come, and it came in a person. And John said, men love darkness. They love their own vain imagination. Many men and would not come to light, but those that come to light gave he the power, gave he the right to become sons of God. And this light illuminates us to what sons of God are. That's the only way we know what sons of God are. Is by the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, we don't know. See, we'll still go back and imagine what they are but the light who is christ gives definition yes so you come into the book of proverbs proverbs 8 proverbs 8 verse 18 says riches and honor are with me yea Durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me, acquired, obtained, in the beginning of his ways. Now, this word beginning could be, could deal with order. 
Okay, we can leave that alone. I'm the first and the last. So in the beginning of his way, so before man was, God thought, saw in Christ. In the beginning of his ways, before his works of old, I was set up from everlasting from the beginning. Like I said, God said, let there be light. So from the beginning, God established light. Light was not defined, though, to Jesus Christ came. But he established it from the beginning because it was the determined counsel and purpose of his own heart. Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth when there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth while I was yet. He had not made the earth nor the fields nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heaven, I was there when he set a compass upon the face of the depth. So this thought of God was always before God. This word of God was always before God. This purpose of God was always before God. Always rejoicing, the book of Proverbs says, before him. This was always before him. So when he created man, he created man in view of this word, in view of this thought, in view of this purpose. This was the same that was in the beginning with God. And God was in this word. This word was God. The, you know, Proverbs 8, where you're at, verse 1 says, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice. She standeth in the top of high places by the way of the places of the path. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. And to you, all men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. Is this not the voice of God? Is this not the word of God? that speaks to the hearts and the minds of men, this wisdom? Sure it is. Well, this is what's made flesh. The word from the beginning, the thought, the purpose, the plan of God from the beginning was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Because God had determined that from the beginning. And now he brings it forth what he had determined in the person of Jesus Christ. And this is what he reconciled the world to, to the light, to the knowledge, to the understanding of God. That's truly what he did. He reconciled the world to himself. He reconciled the world to what was in his heart. He didn't reconcile the world to remain as an Adam man, to remain as a carnal man. See, so many people teach reconciliation in a fashion that, well, God just forgave all our sins. And we just go on living as carnal men, never coming to the divine thought, purpose, plan, and will of God. And folks, that just ain't the truth. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, to, to the thought that was in his heart, to the purpose that was in his heart. And the purpose and thought that's in his heart is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And that's the only place it's revealed because he's the light of the world. 
See, he's the only one we can see the understanding of God from. He is the understanding and wisdom of God. He is the mind and purpose of God. He is everything that God ever desired and that God ever is. All of it contained in his word. Now, now I love that in John 1. In the beginning was the word, the logos, the word. All words that are said are defined by the word. Get a hold of that. All words said are defined by the word. If the word does not give them definition, then we don't know them. Or we have the wrong definition. So the word defines all words. Yes, it does. The word, the logos, the thought, the mind, the purpose of God, that which was from the beginning. He defines everything. And God sums him up and calls him the word, or the Bible does, the word. So every word, all words that have been spoken come to the word. And the word gives it definition. So it's, it's like we, we talk about righteousness. Till, till the word defines righteousness, we don't know what it is. That's why there's all these forms of righteousness. That's why there's all these ideas of righteousness. Because the definition comes through the word. I'm talking about Christ, the living word of God, that spoken of the Father, that that comes out of his mouth, that that comes out of his heart, that comes out of his being. That's what I'm talking about. And in that word, God abides. God dwells in his word. And it's that word that God abides in that was made flesh. And it's that word that was tested and tried at the cross. He was tested as a man. That word that was with God and was God. He was tested as a man. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And that word never failed. That word came out of God, accomplished what God sent it to do, and went back into God, having finished everything God gave that word to do. So when we read about God sending a word and the word accomplishing everything it's supposed to do, honey, the fulfillment of it, the definition of that comes to completion in Christ. Because he is the finality of everything that's said in our prophets. But he was also the beginning. He was also the thought of God from the beginning. So this word ultimately finds its place in our hearts that it can produce in our hearts what God himself thought, planned, purposed from the beginning. Glory to the Lamb of God. That's what we have to do with. That which was from the beginning. The light of God. 
the plan of God, the purpose of God, realized, made known in the face, the unveiling of Jesus Christ. That God in his fullness would dwell in us in his word. Glory to the Lamb of God. Well, I'll stop right here tonight.